on this episode. What up, what up? Hey everyone. Is it recording? Yes. Hey guys, Natasha from Forbes here. This week on the Business of Influence, it's all about money. So how do your favorite online celebrities turn their influence into cash? Online celebrities are like rock stars and baseball players. They probably all make too much money. If they can do it, why not get paid for it? I know Selena makes $550,000 per post. I'm a really big Selena fan, so that's how I know like everything. <laughs> you know, it's hard work to get that brand, it's not easy. We were funded by a YouTube original programming grant back in 2012. YouTube gave money to like the Fine Brothers, Rhett and Link, Phil DeFranco, and us, and a bunch of major media companies that blew it and didn't do anything useful. I'm not pulling any punches anymore, it's been too long. <laughs> so there's a few different ways to make money off of YouTube. Obviously there's the AdSense uh, program. Google AdSense basically pays you to produce content as long as you own it 100%. When we got involved in it, it was right before the AdSense program, I yeah. believe. We started posting every Wednesday and I think we had gotten up in the first few months like to about 10,000 subscribers. Yeah. In, in a sense, like we, we started making money from YouTube, but it was never enough to really co uh, cover like life expenses. And then there's also brand deals. I guess the idea is why would we spend so much money on a commercial that doesn't get the views that we would get? With any brand that I've worked with, with any um, music artist that I've worked with, I always want to make it organic and real and that people to know it comes from me. Early on, we recognized that this wasn't just a fun, fluky thing, but that there was an actual business opportunity. And so we set up right from the beginning, we set up her website, and we set up an LLC. Any business you want to be multivariant with your revenue streams. We have the Curiosity Box, and we have a YouTube Red series. And we have just the AdSense from the channels, we do brand deals. But the, the purpose of all these extra activities is to make it so we don't have to rely on anybody but ourselves. When brands started really working with uh, YouTubers specifically, there was like, you know, some push and pull and YouTubers, you know, needing the finances but not wanting to backlash from their community. For, so for example, on Musical.ly, if a label comes to me to use one of their artist songs, if I like the music, then I'm going to go ahead and do it. If people know that I'll be okay with this type of music, then I'm going to do it. You get your hecklers, like people calling you out, but at the same time, everybody that anybody on social media is posting ads and people are just immune and accustomed to it at this point, that it's just expected. It has to be different for every creator. It depends on the kind of content that you create, it depends on the kind of audience you have, it depends on the kind of person you are. Brand deals might be 90% of one person's revenue and Patreon, where people just like voluntarily subscribe with dollars, might be 90% of another person. On next week's episode, the punchline with all this, everybody thinks it's the sprinkles when it's actually the cupcake. To me, being on television or being in print or being on a billboard, that's the sprinkle. Winning in here is the core. All right guys, thanks for tuning in and don't forget to subscribe.